Norseman Live is brought to you by Isklar, Intersport, Windforce, Bundegruppen and Renault. Welcome back to Norseman Live. My name is Helen Webster and we're reporting live again from the race. And I'm here with my cameraman Robin at one of the most iconic places on this Norseman course. So we are at the point where tarmac meets trail. So these guys, they've done the swim, they've done the bike, they've done most of the run. They've run up what's known as Zombie Hill because it is one of the most intense steep run routes I have ever seen but this is the point where they stop running on road and they start running on trail and behind me right now you can see Gauster Toppen which is the famous black t-shirt finish of Norseman. Now this is steep and I'm not going to lie to you that is quite a hill going on behind me there. You can just about through the kind of gathering weather up there see a kind of pale stone obelisk monument thing on the top and that is the finish line of Norseman of Norseman 2019 so it's quite a way up and I like to say this is a point where zombie hill meets the monster I mean this is absolutely immense so there's a sign behind me which you can just see next to this flag here which has 4,752 meters to the top Norseman extreme triathlon that's 4,752 meters they've got left to go so just under five kilometers, but it is all straight up and it is not tarmac. It is not easy running. You know, it is not easy running on really, really heavy, tired legs. This is the kind of running where you need to concentrate. You need to be alert or I'm going to be honest, you're going to fall on your face. <laughs> yeah, well, Robin said, shall we test it? And I think, you know, he's going to make me walk up there. <laughs> so my co-host, Philip, is waiting at the top with a camera crew. Um, and we're basically, we're going to walk up and meet him. And what, what I would say about this is I'm quite used to trail running um, and I do quite a lot of trail races. So I'm in proper trail running shoes, some kind of climbing shorts and what have you. And Robin, you can't see because he's an amazing cameraman and he's working hard behind the camera. But let's just say he's not in trail shoes. So this could be interesting. Shall we start heading up, Robin? <laughs> so basically, our athletes will come through here. And they have an essential kit check at this point here. So basically, by this point, you're running with your partner. You've got your support runner with you, but you're not allowed to go any further without the Norseman mandatory mountain kit. So both yourself and your support crew must have a rucksack with you. And in that rucksack, you have to have warm, waterproof clothing, stuff that can cope with quick changes of weather on the mountain. You've got to have nutrition. You've got to have food. You've got to have a flashlight pair of warm gloves and some money to get a cup of coffee at the top. So here the girls, guys and girls will check you've got all that kit, then make sure you're signed off to continue, give you a bit of nutrition, a bit of fuel and off you go to the top. We're okay to keep going because we've been checked already, well I have anyway, so let's start our climb. So here we are, it's not all rocks, we're actually starting off with some quite rough hewn steps here. Um, but with five kilometres almost of climbing, this is going to feel tough, I think. And we've basically been sitting in a car all day following a race. So, you know, we have no right to be tired, but I am expecting this to be quite tough. So you can see here from the sort of terrain we're starting to walk up, it's kind of loose gravel, it's boulders, it's quite dusty. I mean, this is not easy to run. And as Robin's just said, this is just the beginning. So it gets steeper the further you climb. And actually, we're starting to see the weather's changing a little bit here as well. So at the bottom of Gauss Top, we've had some quite bright sunshine. Whereas you can see just on the top there, the weather is starting to change. We're seeing some quite thick black clouds developing at the top there. So I did this race commentating last year and we had a similar thing. So it was bright sunshine at the start of the run. And then by the time we got to the top, we had a really, really heavy hailstorm. So I'm kind of hoping we don't get the same thing this year because walking up it in a hailstorm would not be my favourite thing right now. <laughs> but 
or walking down in a hailstorm. No, we're going to see how we go. <laughs> One of our camera crew actually started walking, came back and went to get the lift. So that tells you everything you need to know about this. <laughs> so we're seeing a lot of people walking down. Um, a lot of these people will... <laughs> A lot of these people are probably tourists. We're getting waved at. Do you have a few words for Norseman TV? Are you aware of the race? Uh, we don't uh, but speak English. We are from Russia, in oh. Moscow. <laughs> these guys are from Russia. You're on holiday here. Yes, 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 on holiday. It's a fantastic uh, track, fantastic uh, place, fantastic uh, country. <laughs> country. <laughs> and have you seen these crazy guys racing up here? Oh, it's crazy guys. <laughs> <laughs> All crazy guys. <laughs> Uh, but uh, they are best people. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your trip. Nice to meet you from Russia. Good High night. five. <laughs> so we're going to carry on. And my control room, who are the nicest people. So I'm working with a company called Spox Family, who are based in Sweden, who do the most amazing storytelling from these races. And they've said I can walk a bit slower because I'm already getting out of breath, which tells you everything you need to know, really. <laughs> you don't have to talk all the time. And I don't have to talk all the time, Robin said, which is also very kind. I like they're looking after me. <laughs> we can actually see some athletes there just kind of making their way up this trail as well. You can just see a Norwegian flag pointing out of someone's backpack just there. Um, I mean, these guys will have trained on these sorts of terrains, so they're really used to them. And <laughs> but they will be tired. I mean, 180 kilometers of cycling and the best part of 38 kilometers of running, I mean, they're going to have really tired, heavy legs, lots of lactic acid buildup, really sore muscles in their quads and hamstrings, calf muscles. And we're asking them to climb a mountain, which has us out of breath in about five minutes. So, you know, it's no mean feat, this race. But this is why it's Norseman. This is why it's the world's most extreme triathlon. This is what they come here for. And it's starting to rain. Robin, it's raining. <laughs> My cameraman's just carrying on filming. He's not even bothered. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually really excited for doing this this year though because last year when I was working at this race I took the rain oh I'm just being told by the studio that it's pouring down on the top so if I have to stop and put clothes on in a minute <laughs> that's why <laughs> but yeah last year I got the railway to the top so the um, Gauss Toppen has this really famous funicular railway, which is basically a kind of almost vertical railway that goes through the middle of the mountain. So that's how a lot of people will be going up to spectate. And it's how a lot of the athletes will come down again afterwards. So we're not going to make them all run down afterwards, don't worry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> brilliant spectators here. <laughs> Are you enjoying the race? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting some thumbs up. You know, one of the nice things about Norseman is you just kind of, it's such a huge course, but you just see random people sitting on deck chairs in the most kind of wild environment. <laughs> These guys are really excited here. <laughs> oh, we have some athletes behind us, that's why. We're going to let them go because they're far faster than we are. Hey, do you have a few words for Norseman Live? I'm going to run up with a mic. Hey. hey, you're live on Norseman. Oh. Hey. Are you enjoying the race? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, I'm. Who are you supporting? Are you here with somebody? Uh, I'm supporting Kenneth Bergfoot. Yeah, and has he come through yet? No. No. <laughs> so you're just taking in the atmosphere, enjoying and having yes. a great day? Yes. yes. Getting a suntan. Yes. yes. <laughs> Wonderful. <It's> perfect. <laughs> They're enjoying the weather. I hope they've got clothes for if this rain starts coming down here. <laughs> All right, we're heading off again. Oh, so yeah, these trails, I mean, even this bit here is kind of strewn with really big rocks. We're going to try and find an athlete to get a few words from, but there's one maybe coming up behind us in a second. Ah, it's support crew. I can't actually see an athlete with them. So we'll carry on a little bit more. <laughs> But you can really feel the weather starting to close in now. The wind's actually starting to whip up on us a little bit here. And that big pen of patch of cloud has moved off the top of Gauss Top and there's blue sky again there. But where we are, we're getting some black clouds coming down on us. So it's going to be interesting, I think. I'm wondering what's happened to our other camera crew. I think they're probably sitting on the top, like drinking coffee and eating waffles or something. <laughs> Laughing at me, probably. Oh. 
I've just been told by the studio that apparently on the top they're soaked like dogs. That makes me feel a bit better, actually. Does it make you feel better, Robin? <laughs> yeah, my cameraman says, yeah, 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 he's waiting for the soaking to happen. <laughs> But you know what? I mean, it's a weekend here in Norway, so there's a lot of people here that are tourists as well. People just kind of coming to enjoy and, you know, wondering what's going on. But we have a recap now from some more of the bike and run legs. So let's go to the studio. <laughs> so we and we are at the transition two. Uh, we can see the lead rider. Hans Christian Tugsvig is um, heading into transition two, and this is exciting, exciting footage we're getting here as, as Hans is going to now transition from his bike, his 180 kilometer bike ride, super, super quick, switch into his running shoes, and we can see now he's heading off, that was a really quick transition, <laughs> probably 10 seconds at most, and he's off now on a 42.2 kilometer run up to Gauster Top and now Alan Hovda in second place is right behind him. This is this is turning out to be quite an incredible race. Uh, Alan will transition as quickly into his shoes and be out onto the road, the the first section, the flat asphalt section, uh, 25 kilometers to chase after Hans Christian. This is looking really really interesting, and there Alan's off. He's setting his watch, and I'm assuming these guys will be heading off at probably four minute kilometer pace or quicker. I mean, that's for sure, over the first section. Um, we're now seeing the leading women's athlete in the X-Tri World Championship. This is Lucy Gossage. So Lucy pretty much took the lead earlier on today, and we're now seeing her out on the run. Like looking really smooth, really nice, smooth turnover. We mentioned before that Lucy is really experienced. She's won numerous Ironman titles. Um, she won Patagon Man uh, last year. Uh, that's the race in Patagonia in Chile. Uh, and I think she's really enjoying her time away from traditional Ironman races now doing X-Try. She's looking really smooth. Uh, and she's up, built up a good lead over the, the, the women's field, and she's probably got 20 minutes ahead of the field at this stage, looking really smooth, heading along the road from Iskbudi to Rukan, which is the bottom of the zombie hill when the race starts to get interesting from a running perspective. And we're seeing Lucy there running along, looking smooth so we're back on to the to the men's front end of the men's field we've got Hans Christian he's running along with his support runner you can see there it's obviously allowed to have support runners next to you uh, providing you with support and nutrition and we can see Alan Alan Hovda is not far behind this is the race is very much on Alan's heading up and we can see that Alan's turned up Zombie Hill, and we're starting to head up Zombie Hill now. So just to let you understand what it's like, Zombie Hill is a completely unforgiving uh, hill. You can see the sharp gradient there. At times, the gradients here can be 12, 13%. Uh, so we're seeing some of the some of the runners down, down the field. This is some of the people competing in the Norseman race. Just to explain again, We've got two races today. There's the X-Tri World Championship race and we also have the Norseman race. This is people competing for the Norseman. So now for these guys, it's all about reaching the top at Gauss Top it and getting that famous black T-shirt. They have to make a cut-off point. There's a cut-off point partway up the hill at the Gusta Blink and these Athletes have to be, have to be there for 14 and, a half, 14 and a half hours or the first 160 athletes to make that black t-shirt cut off. So all these athletes right now will be just completely focused on keeping the rhythm and keeping really, really smooth and making that time. So we're seeing some really nice shots along the road there. 
heading towards towards Rogan and towards the turn the turn at Zombie Hill. So these the, these runners now just trying to feel relaxed and just trying to they're suffering now because they've been on the go now for for a long time. This is some of the some of the female competitors as well who are moving up the field. Some incredible performances here. We can see it's the runners there with their support team running alongside them, feeding them, giving them nutrition. Good strong running here. We can see that I mean some of the athletes are just really, really just trying to keep going, enjoying themselves, but just having to keep going here. Just helping you understand from an athlete's perspective what's going through your head at this stage. This is a really, really tough part of the race. You're just trying to stay focused, knowing that you still have the mountain finish that's to come. So you really, 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 really need to keep your focus and, and stay strong and not run too hard too early or else you could pay for it later on in the race. There's still all to race for here. And definitely these competitors will be just completely just focused on keeping one foot in front of another and just keeping rhythm. Some of them even join themselves a bit too much. So I don't know who this is, but it's obviously one of the one of the women athletes who's looking really strong, running really well here. Really good strides, really good momentum and a really good turnover, a really good cadence. So back to Helen. Cameraman Robin, we're still making our way up, but we've run out of any kind of mobile phone signal and connection with the studio. So we're just starting talking and seeing what happens. Um, it looks like we haven't made it very far, but actually I think we have quite walked quite far up because the lake we parked near this afternoon seems quite a long way away now. And as you can see, the rain is becoming increasingly rougher. So where we started, it was quite wide, kind of slabby paving stone steps that looked like being carved by giants or something. And now where we are, it's more like kind of easy sort of bouldering. So we've got kind of these big rocks, little bits of kind of scrubby grass going on, some kind of like rough sort of um, undergrowth. But yeah, it's feeling quite steep already. Um, and as you can see, myself and Robin, we're now in our rain jackets as well because the rain started coming down. So it got steeper. We lost mobile phone signal and we had to put waterproof clothing on. So <laughs> yeah, they we're doing really well All on Gauss well. in this afternoon. <laughs> Um, and also, it's gone a little bit quiet in terms of athletes coming past. Um, so we had a little kind of flurry of activity. Um, obviously, some of the pros have already gone past, but more about that later. Um, and we've seen some of the kind of main field of Norseman athletes go up as well. Maybe some of the kind of stronger athletes in the field have gone past us. But it seems like there's a real gap at the moment. Um, as we've said, this is the point at which tarmac becomes trail. Um, and we kind of, we lose any sort of easy running at this point. Um, so this is where things get really tricky for the athletes and this is where they really start to take the health and safety of the athletes very seriously. So they will have essential kit they have to bring up here. They have to have a rucksack with waterproof clothes, with nutrition, with hydration, um, flashlight, gloves, all that kind of stuff that you would use for kind of more intense race. And if I sound a bit out of breath, it's because I'm walking up kind of boulders. And weirdly, Robin, my cameraman, who is not wearing appropriate footwear for this endeavour, is much faster than me, which is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> he says he can use his breath for breathing rather than talking, which I think is a fair point. But the top of Gauss to top, and just to give an idea of what athletes will face when they get there, there's some kind of like quite steep, wide stone steps that lead to the very summit. And once they get there, there's kind of a little viewing platform. Um, there's a cafe up there serving coffee and waffles, which seems to be a speciality here. And just a great atmosphere. So loads of support crews, loads of tourists. <laughs> You know, lots of people welcoming them to that finish line. And what an adventure to finish on top of a mountain. I mean, it's just amazing. I can't imagine what it feels like to have started this race at five in the morning and to finally end up here finishing on a mountain. I mean, it's just stunning. I mean, even in the rain that we're getting now, it's just beautiful up here. And it's absolutely wonderful. Oh, so we're just looking down here. Um, I'm still not seeing any athletes. It's kind of... A bit of a lull in terms of people coming past at the moment, but they have got quite a while left before the cutoff. So only the first 160 athletes come up this mountain 
and that's not excluding the new world championship field. So the 40 or so athletes that compete in the new world championships, they will automatically come up here and there's 160 places on top of that for the regular Norseman field. So actually, this year it means more athletes will theoretically finish on the top of Gauss's top and here and get that black finishers t-shirt. I'm doing a less chatty commentary because it's hard to walk up this mountain. <laughs> so we still haven't got any phone signals. So I'm hoping you've got some nice pictures as well to look at while we're doing this. <laughs> so the next episode you'll see um, is at six o'clock. Oh, is it five, Rob? Is it five o'clock or six? Pardon? Five Sorry, it's five o'clock this evening, and the next episode of the Norseman Live broadcast is called Pile of Rocks. And that's where we're heading. We're heading to the Pile of Rocks, where Philip O'Connor, who is absolutely unstoppable in presenting, and many of you will know by the kind of earlier presentations today, will be waiting for us. Oh, I can actually. Um, looks like I've got a phone signal back, so. I'm just reconnecting to the studio. Hello, Marlin. Hello, you're back. <laughs> I'm live and talking to the studio. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. So we are live and we're still walking up the hill and it's raining. I said hill, really, it's a mountain. <laughs> we're seeing some people actually pretty speedily walking past us as well, but I think you get a lot of people up here just kind of doing mountain running, mountain climbing for fun. That's the sense I'm getting. We had a couple went past us a little bit earlier with kind of running poles and kind of full on trail running kit who looked like pretty serious athletes, but they were coming down rather than up. So they've just been out for a day enjoying some training on the, on the mountain. And it's really starting to rain now and it's amazing how quickly things can change up here. Yeah, so it's really coming down. Okay, so we're going to stay still for a little while and maybe wait for some athletes to catch up with us. If I try and get the message to Robin, my cameraman. <laughs> so I'm just putting all my wet weather gear on. <laughs> and Handley Norseman have given me a natty cagoule to wear, so that's good. <laughs> but I said this is exactly like last year where we had beautiful sunny weather until we got to Gauss to Toppen and then <laughs> the heavens just opened and we all got soaked. Sorry? I think we need to disconnect for a while. Uh, <laughs> oh. need to weatherproof the camera. Uh, so my cameraman's just telling me that we need to weatherproof the camera properly so I think we're going to have to go back to the studio just for a little while while he sorts his kit out in this rain so hopefully they'll be able to attend to you for a little while. <laughs> So Thank you much, Helen. Thank you very much, Helen. Um, yeah, we're back in the studio. It's Stuart McLeod here, and we're back down the mountain. Obviously, Helen's shown you the, the approach to the top of Gauster Toppen, which is a very brutal. So we're back on the on the road section that heads along. There's a flat section, 25 kilometres, and this is where the competitors here are just really focused on getting the time cut for the black T-shirt. So, the Norseman race, there's two races today. There's the XTRI World Champs race and the Norseman race, two separate races within one. Uh, a lot of these competitors now that are heading along the flat asphalt surface right now uh, are competing for the Norseman race. Um, just really keeping the momentum, keeping going. You can see there's some supporters taking photographs and support crews looking after their athletes, helping keep them fed, nutrition, uh, just encouraging them as well at this stage because obviously they're really tiring, there's lots of fatigue. Um, you can see the athlete here who's just running along and just just keeping, keeping, it, keeping his momentum and keeping his pace, uh, obviously running with some fluids. It's really, really hot today, conditions are pretty tough today, just purely in relation to athletes overheating and really that can really really add to fatigue. 
Yeah. And we're looking down. We're looking down yeah. Zombie Hill yeah. now. This is the, the, the famous Zombie Hill, and you can see okay. the athletes heading up there, and it's really... This is, this is where the race really kicks in. There's not many athletes that are able to run Zombie Hill. It's a really tough, tough section of the race. I mean, many, many really strong athletes are forced to walk at stages here. And this is as you approach from Regan up towards Gustablink. Uh, we have gradients of 10, 12% at points. And at the end of a, of a, of a long, long, hard day, this is just really tough. You can see the athletes, some of the athletes now just having to walk for a bit. It's, it's really it's really hard to explain how difficult this section is. But at the end of an Ironman, if you can imagine anyone that's ever done Ironman, that you haven't to run up a mountain finish towards the end of the marathon, that's really, really tough. Marathons are tough enough as it is without having done a 3.8 kilometer swim and a 180K tough bike ride. We can see some of the some of the congestion with some of some of the support teams um, supporting their athletes. But we're just continuing to head down Zombie Hill, and we can see there's now a lot of the athletes are now getting quite far into the race now. And you can see, yeah, support the support teams just really waiting on their athletes to to get up around you can see these steep hairpins this is this is where the athletes have to run from the flat section up these hills i've always having raced norsemen i've always found this section of the course by far the most difficult part this is really the area where people can really make or break the race a lot of these athletes that are heading up here now are just thinking about getting that black t-shirt finish and these these guys are all looking well within the time to make that, but it's still a long way up this hill section to make the cut off. So just to present the the situation again today, and in the Norseman race, these athletes have swam 3.8 kilometers in a the fjord. They've then moved on to a 180 kilometer bike ride. And currently, right now, they're halfway in to a marathon with a mountain top finish. Now, this is the section where the race really becomes tough. Uh, as I was saying, there's just a lot of these athletes are just having to struggle and walk. Uh, and that's just really quite hard. Their support team is running along with them. It's really great to see the support team. The support team like many of the athletes will tell you, they're just support is just such an important component of this race because without your support team then, you just wouldn't make it round. Uh, your support team that looks after your food, your nutrition, carrying all your equipment, and just generally really looking after you, giving you moral support because the mental aspect of, of this race is huge and you have to just keep, keep fighting and keep keep momentum and keep believing that you can really make it so we're catching up with some of the athletes are now starting to bunch together I think it's also great as well within the world of X try lots of the athletes are just they're out there just competing against the course and themselves um, and there tends to be a lot of camaraderie and friendship amongst the athletes they're all out there taking this race on and just challenging themselves and obviously yep having fun along the way this is great so yeah absolutely having having fun and this is what it's all about but it's obviously tough really tough it's really really warm temperatures today and uh, the athletes are obviously suffering heading up zombie hill uh, the temperature probably 23 24 uh, and that's not easy. So the cutoff point then for the black t-shirt, so just to explain, there's a black t-shirt and white t-shirt cutoff. That's at 32 and a half kilometers. 
then the first 160 athletes will go through to yeah. get the black t-shirt but there's a fixed cut-off point after that of 14 hours 30 minutes for athletes to make the cut-off point at 32.5k at the, at the, at the junction at Gloucester Blink. Athletes that come through after that, they will then have a cut-off, which is at 17 and a half minutes, and that's the cut-off for the white t-shirt. Those athletes then that pass that cut-off point will be able to finish on the lower route towards the Gloucester Blink and get their white t-shirt. So some of these athletes will be way further down the field but the athletes we're looking at right now are definitely battling to go and get the black t-shirt. It's looking, looking really tough here. Yeah. There's no shame in walking up Zombie Hill. It's a really tough section of the course. And you can see just temperatures today just have to force you into walking up the hill. Just getting one foot in front of another. It's been such an amazing day, but for the athletes, they're probably maybe just a bit too hot at times. I mean, definitely this is where, this is where the temperature really kicks in because the athletes are not getting an opportunity to cool down. I think they're probably looking forward to the prospect of getting higher on the mountain, maybe closer to the finish, and definitely the temperature will be somewhat cooler up there, uh, bit of wind and bit of breeze. We can see the support teams are, are wearing the white bibs just to identify that they're the official support person. So they're allowed to run with the athlete uh, and provide support. And we can see that here, we've got a situation where there's a team support person in the white bib running alongside their athlete behind them which is great. This is great. Great to see this. It's really, yep, having great fun and really enjoying it together. This is good, actually. I see someone from one of the Norwegian tri triathlon clubs. Uh, yep, getting the nutrition in, really, really important. Keep hydrated. It's super important to keep hydrated at this stage. There's lots that can happen between here and the mountaintop finish just in relation to fighting for places. There's a lot of things can happen. It's never over until it's over. Uh, and that's one thing that that's really different about Norseman is that it's just so unpredictable on this mountain finish and changes people can change places often uh, and you have to really stay focused all the way For these athletes, it's just all about getting to the top of Gauss the Top and, and getting that black t-shirt. Again, we can see support teams supporting their athlete. Yep, it's great. It's really great to see this, because this is what part this is what X Try is all about. Out on the course with your support team. Really doing the challenge together. You can see that the athlete here is just driving his hands down onto his thighs, really just trying to keep some momentum, just to keep on forcing up the hill. We can see an athlete behind, still running up the hill, which is which is incredible to be still running at this stage. And some other athletes you see that just choose to run themselves, not to have the support with them, which is which is just a preference for some people. They maybe just want to go and suffer alone. Uh, their support team will be in their vehicle. Maybe just keeping an eye on them and watching them. So this is great to see. Sometimes the camera is all the incentive you need to to get you running again, which is great to see. So this is this is good running. And uh, we're looking down Zombie Hill as we're seeing some of these kind of tight switchbacks and support teams all over all over the, the course 
just waiting to support their athletes. We can see pictures there of uh, Gauss to Toppen. That's where the athletes know that they want to be. That's the finish line for them. For anyone competing for the black t-shirt, that's the that's the goal, that's the finish line to get to the top of Gauss to Toppen. Uh, and that's all they're thinking about at this stage, but it's still, it might seem close, but it's still so far away in time. So maybe at this stage now, this athlete's probably got somewhere in the region of 12 kilometers left to run or walk in this case but it's a long long time to cover that distance because the mountain is really steep and really difficult to rain we've seen in some of the footage earlier that helen was showing just how difficult that terrain is it's not easy it's really not easy We can see the support team sometimes just carrying packs with with all the things the athletes might need. Because the weather can be changeable up here as well, so sometimes they might need to switch their clothing. Uh, and obviously, as I've said, they'll need to be keep stay fueled with food, keep hydrated. We can see the support vehicles that they're, they're moving around because the support vehicles obviously need to get ahead and get themselves in a position further up the mountain so that they're, they're there for their athlete as well. And it's all about getting one foot in front of another and having fun. We've seen some athletes up here, they're yeah, really, really struggling here. But everyone struggles up Zombie Hill. I think, yeah, I think it's just sometimes important that the support team just keep, keep their athlete, keep giving them encouragement and just keep them moving, keep the momentum, just keep them going sometimes just having a conversation is sometimes a good distraction from from the fatigue that these athletes will be feeling really really tired they've been out on the course for a long time and they'll be just really desperate to get to that mountaintop finish and claim that black t-shirt the athletes the kind of athletes that that come along and, and race X try, they really, really have to be mentally strong because uh, these races are, are not easy. And you really, you really have to want it. You really have to dig deep and be mentally strong as well as physically prepared. Um, it's just incredible that there's so many athletes out there now looking for these kind of challenges and looking for taking on courses like Norseman. And Norseman is, as many athletes have said, it's the it's the ultimate triathlon. It's the toughest race on the planet. We're seeing all the athletes now at this stage of these these athletes are extremely strong and they're they're all now in a situation where they're having to walk up the mountain finish. And these guys are all just thinking about getting there and getting the black t-shirt finish. It's all about just keeping momentum and just keep moving, keep moving. They're going to make the cut off these guys. They just have to keep moving. And you might as well smile. So we're just kind of recap on where we've been today. So we started this morning with a 3.8 kilometer swim in the fjord. And then we were through transition, transition one. 
in Edfjord, and then we moved on to a 180 kilometer bike ride. Uh, really tough profiled bike ride. Uh, and then we arrived at Transition 2 in Nospudi, and um, that's where we switched to the run, which is a 42.2 kilometer marathon that moves along the flat for 25 kilometers and then turns up into Zombie Hill. Zombie Hill being where we're seeing these images coming from now. And these athletes are due to quite soon turn off Zombie Hill and they're going to start heading up the last section of five kilometers to the top of Gauss the Toppen, the finishing line for Norseman. So I'm starting talking. <laughs> oh, right, there we are. <laughs> okay, okay, so we are back on Gauss the Toppen. We had a few technical difficulties. Mainly, it started raining really heavily. So, um, not only did we have to stop and put coats on, but the camera was getting wet, and what was kind of quite dry and rocky, kind of muddy stuff underfoot got really, really slippery all of a sudden. So. It's fair to say that myself and my cameraman Robin, we are not elite athletes competing in Norseman. <laughs> we are journalists just kind of like trying to get to the top to see the finish line. And yeah, it got quite hard a minute for a second there. It was, um, yeah, really kind of wet, really slippery, um, really difficult underfoot. So we just stopped for a minute and <laughs> now we're back. But in the time we've been kind of off air and you've been watching all the action from Zombie Hill, we've actually had some quite interesting athletes go past us. So first up, we had Martin Flinter, who's in the male pro team um, race. Now, Martin is an amazing athlete and he is kind of multiple winner of um, Xterra, which is the Ironman off-road distance races, so Xterra World Championships. And he's also multiple winner of the Ertler Swimrun World Championships. And Ertler, obviously friends of Norsemen, and it's still a really tough race season. I mean, I see a couple of athletes here coming past and really focused. Actually, the athletes we're seeing, it hasn't been very many have gone past as well, have been off live, but they are all moving pretty quickly. I mean, they're not hanging about like me and Robin sorting out kit and wondering if it's slippery, you know, they're really going for it. So, so yeah, Martin Flinter went past us. Martin Flinter, multiple winner of Xterra, of Ertler swim run race. He's a really tough guy. He went past us first, looking really strong. And then we've also had Lucy Gossage, who I believe is still leading the women's race. She went past us as well. Um, and I think she was racing with her mum, a support crew. Um, I'm just answering my phone to the studio. But yeah, Lucy Gossage went past us and she was looking um, super strong as well with her mum, a support crew. And Lucy's just an amazing athlete. She's known in the UK as a Duracell bunny. Um, she's super fast. <laughs> um, but yeah, Lucy, she, like I said, known as a Duracell bunny in the UK because she has kind of boundless energy. And Lucy, she's she's just amazing. She's not very tall, but she's kind of this little kind of cheery, bubbly, smiley kind of bundle of energy. And yeah, she went past us with her mum um, in tow as her support crew. And they both bounded up there like kind of some sort of mountain gazelles and said hey to us on the way past. So that was really nice. We're expecting Lucy to win the women's race. But obviously, I'm on a mountain with poor phone signal, so I haven't checked the leaderboard for a little while. So we'll let the kind of team in the studio update you on what's happening a bit later um so yeah lucy went past us looking great uh, mark threlfall who's a british athlete who actually kind of won the swim this morning and was first out of the swim leg he went past us just now with his support crew i think he was finding it a little bit tough we said hey to him and he was kind of head down in the focused in the zone getting on with it and mark he was a full-time professional triathlete um now working for um a media kind of resource online, kind of doing lots of videos about triathlon stuff, so still within the triathlon world. Um, but yeah, he went past us. And then just a couple of the other athletes from the main kind of Norseman field have gone past us as well. So yeah, but quite a few athletes, but all really focused, um, really kind of intent on what they can see ahead of them. And I've got to say, we kind of came round a corner back then and you couldn't see the top of Gauss to Toppen for a little while. And then all of a sudden it kind of reared ahead of us like some great big kind of monster. And and you realise that even though you think you're kind of getting there, it's still a very long way away. So God knows what these athletes must feel when they get to this point. But... No <laughs> so <laughs> we were... So 
we were driving up here on our way to park up and come and see the finish. And there's a point on the run course where you turn around a corner and you see Gauster Toppen for the first time. And let's just cut back to video and see my reaction to that. We're in Milan on the run course of Norseman 2019. And we just wanted to stop and jump out the car for a second and show you something. So. The run course to this point has been relatively flat but quite undulating and this is the moment where the athletes round a corner and they look up and they see Gauster Toppen for the first time. So Robin, my cameraman, is just going to show you now what those athletes will see. So that beast ahead of you, that mountain to end all mountains, that is Gauss to Toppen and that's where our athletes are going to go to if they're lucky enough to make that cut off the black t-shirt finish. So yeah, so that was our reaction to seeing Gauss Toppen for the first time on the course. And so that's what athletes see when they round that corner for the first time and they see Gauss Toppen rising ahead of them. Like, like I said, like some sort of great big monster. And you know, you read about it and you hear about it and you prep for it. But I think until you actually see it, you don't really appreciate what it is you're letting yourself in for. I mean, it is huge. <laughs> um, so what I've heard about Gauss Toppen as well, when you get to the top and when we reach the summit, obviously we'll show you some pictures, but I've been told that's a point where you can see something like a sixth of the whole of Norway. So when you stand at the top, you can see a sixth of the whole of Norway from there. And my cameraman thinks you can also see Sweden as well. That might be a rumor, but you know. So anyway, it's very, very high up. <laughs> and we've just realized we're slightly off the trail actually. So we need to kind of go a little bit higher and get back up to where these people are walking. <laughs> so, so I'm going to ask Robin, my cameraman, just to pan around a little bit and he's going to give you a sense of where we are standing here because the views are absolutely beautiful. And like I've said, we are nowhere near the top of this thing yet. But you can see these amazing valleys and the kind of the light and shade where the sun is hitting them. You know, you can see the lakes, you know, the fjords. I mean, it is absolutely stunning. And we're lucky enough that we can kind of take a little bit of time to look at it. Unlike these athletes who are just focused on getting to the top. Um, but yeah, it is absolutely beautiful. and. You know, this is only going to get better as we progress up Gauss Top. And so what a place to finish a race. And, yeah, this is what they come here for. It's, it's hard as hell, but when they get there, it's amazing. Um, but, yeah, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, there's no paved roads. Robin's just said something about paved roads, and he's kind of upon a rock, so I'm finding it hard to talk to him. Yeah, there's no paved roads. <laughs> it's just kind of rock climbing. Yeah, I think this counts as the opposite of paved roads, yeah. Well, you can't see Robin, my cameraman, but maybe he can show you what he's about to walk up. He's basically kind of climbing up some rocks. So you can see those there. And I'm kind of off the course. So I've got to go and join him. Um, so I might. <laughs> so we're going to like show you some more scenes from Zombie Hill. Now, for those of you that might just be tuning in, Zombie Hill is, it is hard. So the run course here, it's a marathon distance. It's 42.2 kilometers. Um, any marathon is hard, any marathon is an achievement, but the marathon at the end of the Norseman Triathlon, I mean, it is extreme to say the least. So it starts with quite undulating terrain, it's on roads, so it's not flat, you are kind of going up and down, but it's not kind of mountainous. But then you come to Zombie Hill, which is, it's just switchback after switchback of running up a road, I mean, it is brutal. And then you come to Gauss Top and run up the mountain. Um, and according to the studio, they're telling me there's quite a lot of people still struggling down there on Zombie Hill. So we're maybe gonna cut back and see some images of them now and just kind of see how they're all getting on. And meanwhile, I'm gonna try and clamber up these boulders and find my way back to my cameraman who's kind of I don't know how he's done it he's kind of beating me up there so <laughs> I need a little time to catch him up Okay, so I am still making my way up to meet my cameraman. It was, woo, 
And that is what happens when you're not concentrating. I'll flat on my face on a mountain. <laughs> so we are live again. And then we're kind of picking our way through these boulders to get to the top of this section of Gauss to Toppen. And there are no roads here. There are no footpaths here. Like there's barely trails. This is just rocks we're picking our way through. So it is really difficult walking and running up here doesn't even bear thinking about. <laughs> Oh, so carefully picking my way up here. <laughs> See, I do quite a lot of trail running back in the UK and it is nothing like this. <laughs> yeah, so my cameraman was just saying that, you know, if we're flying this hard, imagine how our athletes are finding it. And, you know, they've done a 3.8 kilometre swim at five in the morning. <laughs> they've done 180 kilometres on a bike and not just 180 kilometres. <laughs> Really tough. So, yeah, they've done 180 kilometres of really tough cycling up and down mountains, um, as we showed in our earlier video. And then we asked them to come and do a whole marathon. And it's a whole marathon on really kind of tough mountainous terrain. I mean, it is absolutely brutal. And I am struggling. So how they feel with, you know, build of lactic acid in their legs, tired, tired, tired muscles. I mean, God knows. Um, so I'm going to concentrate on walking for a little bit longer. I'm going to cut back to Zombie Hill, where some of the athletes are still struggling, still yet to get here and face Gauss to Toppen. Yeah. Did you get that, Robin? Okay, thank you. So this is Gauster Toppen and you can see Gauster Toppen rising up, just kind of rising through the mist and the clouds behind me. Um, so we have had an amazing day so far from that early swim in the fjord to 180 um, kilometres of brutal mountainous cycling to Zombie Hill to a marathon run and to finally finish on this crazy mountain which has no paths, no trails, just rocks. Um, so we're going to wrap up now and leave you with some kind of scenes of some amazing scenery here. We're going to make our way up to the top where we'll have our final broadcast of the day, the final broadcast of Norseman 2019, the world's most extreme Woo! triathlon. Everyone's at cheering here. Oh, we've got, we have an athlete coming up. <laughs> Looking strong, he's giving us a thumbs up. How is your day going? Are you enjoying Gauss to Toppen? Yes. 
<laughs> Our athlete says this is the best place in the world and we're going to go to the top and just find out what is so amazing about the top of Gauss Top. And I'm laughing because I'm muddy, I'm out of breath. I know I've got another about three kilometres left to climb. So join us back here in an hour for the, for the final show of this. So we're going to top in an hour where I'll be joined by Philip O'Connor and we will look at the rest of the action from today. But for now, I've got a lot of climbing to do. I'm going to get off this rock and make my way to the top for the final broadcast of Norseman 29 in one hour's time.